you for this opportunity that we can gather together and we can do your work, Lord, and that we can we pray for your wisdom and we pray for your guidance and we just thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day. It is an honor to work here and work with wonderful people that, that care and love this township. We reflect, Lord, about the boys that are being uh, rescued right now on the other side of the world and we, we just pray for them and pray for their safety and we think of our emergency responders and, and how they put their life on the line and they save local people on a regular basis. We, we thank you for that, Lord. We pray, Lord, our president's about to make some major decisions, and we pray that you'll be with our government and hope that these decisions are all wise, and we pray for your blessing on that. Thank you for Georgetown Township and the people that serve and the good, kind hearts that they have. We ask your blessing, Lord, and guidance. Amen. 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 Please stand and join us in the stand of the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Our clerk, if you would call the roll, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman, let the record indicate that all members of the Township Board are present. All right, thank you. Item 5, the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Move to approve. Support. 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 Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign. And the agenda is approved. Item 6, communication letters and reports received for information. And uh, those are received. Item 7, public comment period. Is there anyone here tonight that would like to step forward and address the board? On any of the items listed on our agenda for this evening's meeting, if not, there's certainly an opportunity later in the meeting to speak on any issue that you please, or you can speak both times if you wish. So, for anyone? All right, seeing none, we'll close the initial public comment portion. Item 8, consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Support. Okay, moved and supported. Comments, questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Close the same sign, and item 8 is carried and approved. Item 9, the second reading and adoption of ordinance number 2018-16, the International Fire Code, which we discussed at our last meeting. Is there a motion at this time to approve the second reading and adoption of this ordinance? I'll move to approve the second reading and adoption of ordinance number 2018-16. Support. Okay, move to support. Is there further discussion this time around still about this code, or is everyone... Satisfied, they understand the whys and the whats. Okay. A lot of head nodding. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Same sign. And it is carried. Item 10, a resolution tentatively establishing Fusion Property slash Denso International America Incorporated Industrial Facilities District. Um, we have a motion before you, a proposed motion, based on what was said in Finance Committee. I know we've received some uh, adaptation of the original request since then, and I also see presumably a couple of gentlemen here tonight for that issue. Or do I have that pegged right? Oh, okay. These two gentlemen. Um, would it be appropriate, Board, if, if they are allowed to come forward and address us at this time? Absolutely. With that? All right. Would you please? Either or both? Good evening. Uh, my name is Ken Rizzio, and I'm with Lakeshore Advantage. I do economic development throughout the county. And with me is uh, Phil Gulker. Doug Gulker. Gulker, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Doug is with uh, Fusion Properties. And the request tonight was to establish an industrial development district for approximately five acres of property at Chicago Drive and 18th Avenue. And there is a building that's gone up, and the request is Coming in, there will be an application uh, coming to the township shortly uh, from a research and development high-tech firm. Pretty excited about that's it. going to stay here in West Michigan and not go off to California or not go off to Massachusetts. So the request will be coming to do a 12-year PA-198 to support that uh, project. And again, the information next, farther down the road, it will be coming to you. But today is essentially to set the public hearing as I understand it <laughs> district. And again, Doug is the uh, property owner and responsible for the construction of the facility. All right. Thank you. Uh, Doug, would you like to add something? Yeah, I guess the only uh, 
additional information I wanted to give is that uh, the building had been started when the application was first submitted, and uh, this tenant required quite a bit of tenant improvements, and uh, part of their ongoing improvements is bringing in a lot of testing equipment. So their plan is to start small with a staff of probably eight to ten and, and grow it to probably 15 to 30. So mm -hmm. um, we want to give them every tool they need to, to make that growth. It is actually an international company. Their North American headquarters is in um, Southfield. So um, we're pretty excited to have those jobs possibly coming sure. to West Michigan. So sure. I appreciate that. I just a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, I think you built a beautiful building there. I think everyone would agree. And uh, this potential tenant of yours sounds like a um, very fine opportunity in terms of research and development and, and uh, good job. So we appreciate you uh, bringing that to our attention. Um, could you clarify something, and, and perhaps it's clear already to the rest, but I want to be sure. I know sitting on the Finance Committee, when we addressed this issue um, uh, last meeting, the understanding of the request at that time was for an abatement relating to the construction cost of the half of the building or whatever percentage it is, as well as improvements. And do I understand now is the request modified to say no, the whatever number of hundreds of thousands of dollars of tenant improvements we'd like uh, this IFT for and, and, and the rest, I guess, we could dispense or, or? The improvements are entirely specific to that tenant. So yeah. um, it includes none of the shell costs, includes none of the site costs or land costs. Okay. So these are very specific to them, and honestly, it's just the start of improvements they will be making. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. And the three of us sit on finance, and, and I know one of the things we were stumbling over was the we, we don't get a lot of these requests, but we can't think of the last time we received one for a building already built if it were to include the cost of that building, and so we were tripping over that. Um, but it sounds like you're saying, Doug, that really the request is more to do with all the tenant specific improvements right. within the building. Okay. All right. All right. So we're talking, if I just might, we're talking about that five hundred and fifteen thousand. Right. Okay. And um so it's actually gone up slightly since then, but Okay, well as things are apt to do. Um, so just so I'm clear, I think I understand now and I heard what was said. So you're basically only asking us to grant the tax abatement to cover the cost of those lease improvements, which were 515000 but now they've gone up, whatever that figure is. Am I correct in that? Yeah, I want to talk about the process. This step today is really just to establish a hearing to set up the district where an abatement can go. Right. So right. there's actually four approvals that will have to take place. This, this initiating the process, actually establishing the district, and then receiving the application and scheduling a hearing, and then approving the application. So the, the finished application will have more detailed amounts, the number of jobs. That will be in that third and fourth step. Right, right. And I appreciate that information. I The reason why I asked is because I wanted to be aware of what the steps were because I don't want to vote to go to a public hearing if down the road we're going to say, oh, now we've gotten this information now. I really, I'm not so sold on it. I think mm -hmm. we should, I'm, I'm not saying approve it, but I, uh, that is, that, you know, the four steps that we need to go through, we can do that. But that's why I'm asking the questions now. Okay. Uh, other comments, <laughs> thoughts among the board? The, the Finance Committee recommended that we deny, uh, because our taxes at this particular time are incredibly competitive with other Areas. Would anyone care to expound on that a little bit? I would if, if you don't mind, the others of you. And, and that was kind of what I was trying to to, uh, to discern there with my questions of the applicant was <clears throat> we were tripping over the idea of granting such an exemption for abatement on the totality of the, you know, the envelope of the building, which has already been built. Now that they've modified the request to be tenant specific, um, it's really not for what it's worth, John, and, and I asked Dan to do some it's pretty rough numbers. I'm not talking about a lot of money, unfortunately, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to diminish your request, but when you look at it, even over 12 years' time, I don't think I'd be out of line to say you're talking maybe roughly 10000 bucks. when we are 
wanting to be obviously business friendly. So if someone who sits on finance, the way I felt initially, I can only speak for myself, but the way I felt initially has changed with this changed request. And I'm, I'm fairly enthusiastic about this opportunity. So that's just my, my point of view. But the, anyone else? The 10000 over the time is the township cost. They would also save okay. on some of the other millages in addition to that. So they would have a bigger savings. That's just the expense to the township. Okay. Thank so you. So since they've yeah. modified their request, the finance company feels much more. I, I do. I don't know. Mm -hmm. feel more well, yeah. I, I, yes. However, the proposed motion that's before us, which we haven't put on the floor, I don't think we need to put that on the floor. I think we have to come up with a new motion, and that would be right. for that, for a hearing or some such. Yeah. 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 Most important because that's mm -hmm. the first step, and sure. so mm -hmm. it has to be a, a new a motion other okay. than what we have recommended. Right. If you don't mind, before that motion is made, is there anyone else who just wished to speak to it generally? Um, I have just two quick questions. Are, is there a certain number of these districts that we can establish? No, we we used to do this per applicant basis. And then at one point we decided, why why are we doing this every time the applicant comes? And so we did the entire industrial park as one district. This is just outside of the industrial park, which is why it's not part of the, the district. So picture we were having this applicant on lot 12 and then lot 14. We did a district, essentially voted on it four times. Well, so we basically skipped it and combined the whole rest of the industrial park area. So, okay. Okay. My second question is, what happens after the 12 years? Would they reapply, or does that disappear? No, no. It, it basically then goes on the regular rule. Okay. So you understand that improvements will be depreciated as well. So. Good question. Yeah. So, so are we voting? Uh, um, are we going to ignore this motion? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Rich, do you want to formulate a motion? We really, the motion that's there, we can't really, because yeah. we've already said we don't want to do that. So basically, if you're looking for a motion, it would just be to tentatively establish, establish a, a public yeah. hearing for the purpose yeah, of yeah. And considering then, yeah. Direct the request for tax yeah. abatement. That's yeah. basically it, right? For the distance. So, yeah. And so that's what I would make. I move, I make that motion. And I'll second that. Okay. So we're going to second now. This is a roll call. This is vote, correct? Yes. I was going to ask, is that, is that parcel currently zoned industrial or is it commercial service, office, neighborhood? Highway service. Highway service. Yeah. Um, I don't. I, we can do a roll call if you desire to do that because you're the chairman, but I don't think we need to. Okay. All right. This is just to establish a date, a mm -hmm. tentative date for a hearing. Okay. So I think traditionally we've always done these in the industrial, in the industrial park, that pine bridge or pine. <clears throat> I've never turned one down. And if this is. Um, highway service, are, is this going to set it up for other areas? Keep They'd have to go through the same process, yes. And that's my theory, if we start something new, typically it's always been industrial, and now we're adding highway service to it, and then next it might be neighborhood service, or commercial service, or I'm just wondering down the road. Maybe. Kind of setting up for, I think that's a fair point, Michael, and I guess maybe the way each of us should approach this is to say, each case is our scrutiny. Each case has to stand on its own merit. And do we feel like this particular one merits it without setting any sort of precedent to mindlessly approve anyone that comes before us? I think I trust, whether we're on the board or not when that next request comes, I trust that the board would consider each one on its own merit and say, does this make sense? Um, but, you know, example whole precedent thing. Yeah, I mean, deal with that with the Zoning Board of Appeals is once you do one that it does. Now, this will... It, Abate them from the 18 mills for the schools. The industrial, industrial are already; they don't have to pay the same millage already. There's different breaks already for that. So, for their personal property, so those other millages are all cut in half. So, the schools are held harmless because they're an informal school district. So, essentially, that money is made up by the state. The state guarantees so much per pupil uh, for the school district, and so whatever they don't collect here will be made up from. By the state, so British chip and less from us. It's going. It's less goes into the school aid fund, right? So they're held harmless because they're per student. Is how their funding is decided. Their debt millage, however, um, they'll collect less. But at the same token, it's actually only on the increase, so they're really going to collect additional revenue than what they currently have.
community, so um, I pay taxes on my home, and uh, we have two other commercial properties that we've not applied for, so this is something we're coming to every time we we also have our office in the building, my partner's office is in the building, so we're not uh, doing it for ourselves, we're doing it for a And I think I speak for all of us, regardless of which way we might vote on this particular issue, that we're very uh, excited for what you're doing and, and appreciate the investment in Georgetown Township and, and the possibilities of this new tenant. So, uh, thank you. So, are you ready to vote on the motion that's before us at this time? Yes? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Those things signed. All right, the motion is carried. We've begun the process. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, that was item number 10. Item 11 is to review the request for the battery operated extrication equipment for the fire department. So, discussion or motion about that? I just wondered if uh, Dan would like to, you know, come up and if the board has any questions because you were on vacation during that services meeting. And I didn't know if there would be any questions, so that's why we. Made motion not against it, but or you know, at the services, just to maybe have you explain a little bit about it. Uh, going back to that uh, last uh, meeting, it was my state of the fire department. And I addressed each station has a set of extrication tools, and what that consists of is a jaws, a scissors, uh, a ram, and then a brake pedal or gas pedal uh, cutter. Uh, two of the three we have mounted at the rear of the apparatus on reels. Each reel has a hundred foot of hydraulic lines on it. They leave the, uh, the motor and the, the power unit right in the back of the truck, start it up, pull the reels out, and then go to the uh, extrication wherever it may be. The third station has theirs where they're more mobile, where they have the, the, the motor, the power unit, and then they have their hydraulic lines hooked right to the tools, and then they're coiled up on the uh, on the motor. Uh, station uh, three and two can do that as well, but they have to disconnect everything, grab the hoses, grab the tools, and then go out. Uh, with these new sets of tools, with this new set of tools, it is uh, a battery battery operated system. And it, it's, uh, the concept is no different than a DeWalt drill, uh, a cordless battery operated drill. If you run out of juice in the battery, you pull the battery out, slap another one in, and you're good to go. Um, each one, <clears throat> the jaws, the, the cutters, the rams, each one of them has a battery. So, I mean, the, uh, the, the current tools we have uh, are, are limited in to what you can do with them. Where now, if you went to this newer set, and there's four different pieces of equipment, four of you could take one of those and start tearing a car apart. So there is a, a huge benefit to it. The, the mobility of it is, uh, again, you just grab it off the truck, slap the battery in it, away you go, and start cutting. Um, <clears throat> these units that we have, it's a Genesis brand name. Um, they're designed very well in that they can cut cut through the higher uh, strength metal on some of the vehicles that we're running into. Uh, the current set that we have on 832 where this this uh, equipment would go uh, is an older unit, and, and there are uh, automobiles right now that uh, it will not cut the metal on these cars. So, um, again, very nice system. Uh, there's... Various other manufacturers out there, but uh, uh, years ago we went with Genesis uh, on all three of the current tools, and uh, that's pretty much why I went with one bid to, to keep it Genesis. Okay. Anyone else questions for the chief? And does this replace the existing equipment, or is this in addition? This will. Um, if you remember the truck, the 832 is that big box truck. There's an older set of extrication tools on there. It will take, it will replace those tools. So, and then everything will be uh, pretty much up to date. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that uh, we approve the purchase of the battery operated extrication equipment for the fire department as submitted. I'll support that. I move to support it. Discussion. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
Um, I did a fair amount of research before the services committee on this. Um, it is the newest technology, and it makes sense because of the portability of it. You're not limited to that tether of 100 foot. Um, and with advances in batteries, um, it's doable. Um, and it was interesting to find the same batteries I use in my Milwaukee tools, my grinder, and stuff as well. Um, so it's readily available, yeah. affordable to re replace batteries. Um, and, um, I mean, the price really wasn't too bad. Um, the only thing with that, um, I think the, the bid that we got, one I would like to see, you know, I'd, I'd be willing to go up to that, I think it was 42000 um, But one of the line items was selling the old, um, I'm drawing a blank on an Acumus, Amkis. Amkis ones, fourteen hundred dollars. That included selling the old um, pump generator, um, the hose, a uh, ram, a cutter, and a jaws for fourteen hundred for that price. Either instead of giving it to that company for that deal, maybe check with some other fire departments to see if we offered that same price to them if they were interested. Because um, when I did some searches on that brand, um, the tools do still get some decent money. Um, so rather than give it as a trade-in for that small amount, I think I would like to see it. And I don't know if it would need to be an amendment to that motion to explore the options of helping out a fire department up north or somebody else rather than selling it pennies on the dollar to a sales place. But. Dan, uh, weren't you thinking of keeping that for a backup? Or did I, did I get that wrong? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. I understand that the current motion it authorizes the purchase doesn't necessarily dictate what happens with what we currently have. Did you have any thoughts, Chief, about what you heard, the practicality of that suggestion or We're getting rid of them because they don't currently meet our needs. And we're getting rid of them because they don't currently meet our needs, but they would have the same needs up north. They would have Okay. Yeah. So it's something there. No. It's, would it be fair to say that within the motion we have that approves the purchase, the latitude is inherent there that if Dan suddenly found a better option, mm -hmm. then I suppose he could just do that, right, without our authorization. He could do, just do with it. With a flexibility. I don't think you have to put yeah. that in the motion. Push okay. Down. Yeah. And I think the other thing, too, and, it, and this is tricky, because, and Dan will probably know better than me, but um, we got one bid. I would like to see multiple bids. Are there real territorial where if I call a place in Texas and they're like, sorry, you got to call your Michigan rep? Or? Yeah. Yeah, and that's the tricky part is the territory. They want to protect their pricing. And, hmm. Which is understandable. Hmm. So that's a unique situation in that respect. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. That motion is carried. All right. Item number 12, resolution for the privatization of the ICE Center. Um, I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman, to approve the resolution to recommend as recommended by the Finance Committee as presented in the agenda. I'll support that. All right. Thank you. And the gentleman I pointed to earlier, I thought we were here on the other issue, I think are here on this issue. Um, and maybe didn't come necessarily intending to speak, but are here as a resource. If you wish to address the board, you're, you're welcome to do so. But if you'd rather just be a resource if we have a question, if you have a preference in that respect. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank Jim, you. Could, could they maybe share their vision for what they would like to? So yeah. So if you would, that would be. Uh, my role as president of Grand Rapids Griffins. Uh, I have with me Mark Tomasic, who is our associate general counsel, uh, DP Fox Holdings, which is kind of our parent company. 
We've uh, kind of been in the ice rink business for 20 plus years. We've uh, had a public private partnership with uh, formerly Belknap Ice Arena, uh, rebranded Griff's Ice House at Belknap Park that dates back to 1996. And then are the owner operator for uh, Griff's Ice House West, which is formerly the Edge, uh, out in Holland, and that'll be two years this fall. Um, we were approached by the township. I think we've actually been approached a couple of different times by the township to gauge our interest in uh, this particular facility. Um, we came out and, and looked at it uh, this spring. It's actually it's a well-maintained, a well-run facility. We have no intentions of making any material changes on staffing, certainly not any changes to the key user groups. There's uh, Obviously, relationships with Grand Valley, with the university, there's relationships with Jensen Hudson or Granville, and relationships with the youth hockey organization, um, Grand Valley Stars. Uh, we would see basically kind of continue to operate as it has been operated with continued investments that we plan on making into the facility, both uh, mechanical, operational, and some kind of enhancements that will enhance the user experience. Uh, that will happen over the next, I would say, probably 12 to 24 months that you'll see those investments. Um, our intention fully is to keep this as an ice rink for the foreseeable future. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Jenison and now um, Hudsonville. So, you know, I see firsthand the benefits of this rink, and I know the, the township would love to keep and maintain it as an ice hockey facility for families and youth hockey players and high school players and college players and men's leagues and women's leagues and whatever else to have and enjoy, and we fully intend to maintain that. Okay. Will this affect um, the college at all, Grand Valley State? Will, will the people in this community notice any changes? Shouldn't notice any changes whatsoever. So uh, the key staff that are in place, the general manager, Mike Katowski, the maintenance manager, Jeff Schmidt, well, our intention is to continue to employ those. Uh, individuals, uh, we have relationships and, and the township has relationships and agreements with all those key user groups. We're going to honor and maintain those relationships. So from a user experience, other than some rebranding in terms of signage and hopefully some improvements to the facility and the operation, um, users wouldn't see any difference whatsoever. Do you see some advantages uh, for, for going private? you think you can reach out above and beyond what we've been able to do? I think so, and it's not a criticism of how it's been run in the past, but just speaking from experience, and I've been with our organization since 1995, and we took over operation of Belknap Ice Arena in 1996. Now, that was, and for us, it's a public-private partnership. The city still owns that rink. We've been managing it for 20-plus years. But we saw with that facility coming in uh, as a private operator, there are certain uh, economies of scale, there's a certain expertise that I think we bring to the table that can um, provide a better user experience at a more economical price and have it be a win-win for all, all parties. You mentioned rebranding. Uh, have you thought about what you might call it? We have. So you might Hello, Mr. Sure. <laughs> uh, Griff's Georgetown. Okay. So, again, our three facilities, this being the third, would be Griff's Ice House at Belknap Park, Griff's Ice House West, and then Griff's Georgetown. And, and in the case of this facility, as we talked about names, et cetera, we wanted to maintain some level of consistency with Griff's, so kind of to the hockey team and just from that branding overall. But we feel like in this case, the Georgetown, and, and people just call it Georgetown or Georgetown Ice Center, the Georgetown name has value, and it's a well-run, well-maintained rink. So we don't need to run from that. So this is a more... Perhaps for when we took over the edge, that rink was somewhat in disrepair and didn't have the best reputation. So in that case, it was in our best interest to completely rebrand it. In this case, we feel like there's equity in the Georgetown name. There's equity in the facility in terms of how it's been run. So you know, the intention is just to maintain that. So, so the high schools, the clubs, the university, they should see no change? No change whatsoever. Okay. A different name at the top of the invoice. All right. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Questions? Okay. Anyone else? I wondered what we were going to name it. But yeah, I like that. I do like the <laughs> sound name in there. I like that. I'm very it's excited. Deal. It's a big deal. I mean, it's a big deal. Yeah, I agree. I think it, was, it is a big deal. It's a big decision. It's not taken lightly. I get that. Um, none of us was on the board, I guess, when the public vote took place, but you know the history, and, and this is not taken lightly. 
something that we have talked about for a number of years and talked about different possibilities and um, you know, made a board goal at some point, but it's it's a big deal. And uh, part of the openness here is out of admiration for um, a new ownership and, and uh, your own reputation. You know, I pre yeah, appreciate absolutely. the fact that our reputation is, is for running a good rink, and absolutely. appreciate that you have a, a superior reputation as well in terms of how you, you know, run a rink or yeah, the you. business. So, but uh, it's a big deal. Okay. Others, I don't expect this. To, you know, I'm going to try to run through this real quick. Is there anybody else who wishes yeah. to say anything? John, it makes you feel better. I was involved out in Holland, uh, and I got out before they took over. But after they took over, I can tell you that place is. So much better than it was. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, it's, it's, it's run much smoother. People, I, I hear great things about it. So, I, I mean, I'm very optimistic. I mean, I've seen what they've done. I, I think it's going to be good stuff. In terms of the makeup of the board here, I'd say these two gentlemen who've spoken are the closest to that arena of any of us. You having operated a, you know, a business within the rank, and then John being instrumental, I think, in the original yeah. construction and vote. So, um, it means a lot to me to know that your Supportive, it really does. Uh, I kind of came late to this issue, you know, years after it passed. And, um, well, yeah. Griffin's are a quality organization, thank you. and if we're going to privatize, there's there's no better group well, thank you. to take this under their wing. And again, you guys have a great staff there already, so I, I want to underscore that that you've got some really good guys that are running that rink for you currently, and our intention is to continue to keep them because they're, they're that good. That's wonderful. That's good. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Comments? Uh, thank you. Appreciate that. Comments, questions, anyone? This is an extremely difficult decision for me because it was my goal um, for 2017 and 2018 is to sell it. Um, and it's just up stuck between a rock and a hard place on it. It is, it is a very difficult decision. Um, but I didn't realize that they managed uh, they did a public-private partnership. Did we explore that option at all? Did finance discuss that option? We explored the option. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was explored? Okay. Yeah, it's just... Um, I imagine what you're struggling with, because as you say, it was a board goal of yours. I don't think you have... I'm guessing you don't have real problems with the ability of the buyers. No, no, right. no I think they do a fantastic job. Yep. And I think it's, it's yeah. incredibly needed yeah. to have that new management come in. Um, but Am I right? You you market. wish the market would bear a better yeah. It's the price the price that mm -hmm. mm -hmm. just killing me just killing me. Um, and I don't think I, we didn't get an appraisal. Did we do a B, uh, BPO? Um, did we? We interviewed all of the other rink buyers in the area to see if gauge interest. So value is difficult on a facility that you're losing money on. Uh, right. It's just you're you're essentially losing money. Investing money, there's significant repairs that need to take place, so that all establishes value. And uh, through this process, uh, they're going to be making those investments and join our tax roll, and the township is gaining this asset and will no longer be competing in the private uh, sector. And that's kind of the issue was, is if we do something, we're directly competing with, you know, the, the Rankin Hound, the okay. South Side, we're directly competing those with whatever we do it as we subsidize it with taxpayer dollars. So, right. And uh, so this ends that. Uh, this is passed today. This is, if you're going to have someone operate a rank, uh, this is the value that could be born for that issue. So. I think I would say I, like Michael and maybe the rest of you too, um, wouldn't have known what an ice rink would sell for, first of all, and was surprised probably that it, it doesn't out in the marketplace bear more of a, of a price, but that I've seen Dan um, – there's two different angles, so we've monitored that over a period of months. And, um, of course, in the discussion has been worked for years, approaching Grand Valley, approaching other possibilities. Mm -hmm. I, I have to say, as I sit back and assimilate the evidence, you go, I think this really is the market speaking. Not a lot of potential buyers out there as there would be for a house, for example. So you you kind of begin to realize this is this is what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, and I feel like every time we sit down and talk budget and all of those pieces, we talk about how there's not a lot of cash flow coming in because of the ice arena. And so, 
I, I feel like this can be an end to those conversations. This is going to be a great thing for the ACE arena. It's going to be um, not a noticeable change for the clubs and, and schools that use it. Um, it's, some, it's a great name to bring into the township. I think that the, the connection to Griffins is going to you know, be a good draw. I just can't see a downside. It, it, of course, you know, it's just like when you saw your house, you always wish that you got a few thousand more for it. But um, but I think that it's a fair price, and the market has kind of shown that, and a, a great buyer that's invested in the community, I can't see a downside. Hmm. Uh, unfortunately, an ice rink, because there's so much mechanical, it, it's like an automobile. Yeah. And it tends to go down in value, unfortunately. Uh, repair costs and so forth would be very, very substantial. And, and I believe it was uh, Walker that they, uh, the press had stated about $850,000 a year that they were spending just to keep that functioning. Uh, we've been in the black, and we've had uh, some deficit, but we've got some major repairs coming up. Um, it's probably the, the most difficult decision that I've had to make on a board, hmm. but I believe it's the right one. Hmm. I admire that, John. That is tough. You uh, you sweated a lot and you worked a lot on this uh, over the years, and you have. In the years I've been on the board, there's been no one better versed in what goes on out there, and nor caring more to see it succeed. And I think the fact that. You just pointed out another city had a difficult time, you know, staying in the black. I mean, it was a real struggle to break even on the whole. And I think, <laughs> frankly, it's quite admirable that it did as well as it did. Um, Mike um, managing it, Dan, uh, Rod, they, they've done an incredible job keeping us um, with a, 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 a quality facility, one of the finest in the Midwest. People come in, they are shocked at how beautiful it is. But uh, we've been managed incredibly well. But we're at that point now where there's going to be some major expenses. And uh, this is the finest organization in Michigan that's, that's talking about taking it over. And not having major changes, um, being innovative, this will be very good for our community. But, yes, this is a tough one. Hey, Mr. Clark, are you ready to take the... I uh, am. I had a question. Does that include that corner lot? Yeah. Okay, it doesn't include the corner lot. You ready to call the roll? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Schwab. Yes. Mrs. Steele. Yes. Clerk votes yes. Mr. Weeringa. Yes. Mrs. Skolma. Yes. Mr. Muneer. Yes. Mr. Bosch. No. Carried. All right. Gentlemen, thank you. I'm sure... There will be more discussions between the township and yourselves. I appreciate you coming tonight. Item number 13 is the second public comment period. Uh, and unless Kathy has something to say, I think we, uh, <laughs> we may not have any papers on that one. Okay, seeing none, we'll close the second public comment period. Discussion and general information from the board on item number 14. Anyone wish to bring something before the board's attention? I just, I, I went to Maplewood Park today, and it was incredible. All the people who were down there, it was my first time being able to ride around the uh, oval down there. Beyond my expectations, uh, the bridges were beautiful, um, very well maintained, many, many people there. Mm -hmm. And then coming back, I stopped by the new condos up there, and uh, I think Maplewood Park helped enhance that area. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Condos are going for $409,000. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it, uh, this type of thing uplifts an area. Wow, that was exciting. One little negative um, went to uh, Waterford for their um, uh, opening of their new facility. Terrific tour. Um, but one young lady walked up to me and asked her a lot of questions, and finally she said, are you one of our residents? <laughs> Great hair, <here>, John. <laughs> anyway, thank you, John. Excuse me. I know Dan had something to uh, you saw in the, uh, uh, the letters and reports, the letter uh, from the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are eligible for basically getting the CBD, CBBG funding, the Black Grant Program. 
and we have to respond to them relatively soon. So I, I just want to see if you have any questions or anything to ask, because it'll most likely be on our agenda coming from early August. So we have to make sure you're thinking about it. Excuse me. We have the option to defer or to, um, as it states here, the status of the entitlement uh, to participate through the state, correct? Right. And I went on their website and also the federal website dealing with this. Um, and um, I have my own personal thoughts about it, which I won't share now because sure. everyone else can do their homework. And the basic difference is, is that uh, participating communities get your money direct, so you're guaranteed. The other communities all compete for their share with the state. We could actually get funding directed to us. Uh, last year, if we were uh, eligible, it would have been 189000 approximately for the year of which we probably would have had to spend 30 to 40 to hire someone to administer it because it's very expensive, mm -hmm. uh, the rules that are required. Uh, so that's a factor to consider. It's, it's there to help uh, certain economic issues for housing and the community. So there's only certain projects you can use the funding for. Those are things to consider. But you hear a lot of different things that are accomplished with that funding. So, and that's the question to decide because we will have to move fast to our next meeting if you want to proceed. But that was an excellent point you made in terms of the requirements if you participate in this in terms of you'd have to have an administrator, whatever the person would be called in order to administer the program and all the forms that have to be completed, the paperwork is <laughs> it's unbelievable. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop ever. I mean, uh, anybody yeah. guess how Rich feels about it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not I got a good guess. <laughs> uh, all right, others. Anyone else? I I read through the. I went to the website to look into it more, and I read through I don't know three or four PDF files that were 60 pages. Um, but I think before I would even consider it, I would want to see a full list of all the strings attached mm -hmm. because we all know what happens with the free money mm -hmm. is there's hundreds of strings and hoops. Um, so I'd want to see those laid out first before you even consider it. Um, it just sounds like more government overreach. Mm -hmm. How do I feel about that? We have, we have a, <laughs> a connection we made here. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you guys look tan. You've been out and knocking on doors, I'm sure. So, mm -hmm. best of luck to you both. Really, it's our, I think, potentially our last meeting before the primary, depending on what we've got for an agenda. I think it may be the case. So, um, best of luck to both of you. And uh, I would remind the board, I think it's our first meeting in August that begins at 7 p.m., right? That's the first right. time we'll change the, the time. So, don't forget that. And with that, is there a motion to move to adjourn? I was just going to say, you didn't read a quote today.